Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're doing an overview of the entire third season and talking about what worked, what didn't, and what could have been done differently. First and foremost, if you haven't watched any of these episodes before, there are 43 videos before this one going into minute detail about how each individual episode making up this season went. They're all linked in the playlist above. So this season started off oddly with the Rangers going off to a distant planet of Edenoi to help the Mass Rider, which was a backdoor pilot for another television show. And the only thing of note is that we learned that Alpha was built on Edenoi by a King Lexian. After that, Rita's brother Rito arrived on Earth and he completely destroyed the Thunderzords, stripping the Rangers of all their powers. This led the Rangers on a ninja quest through a desert to find the great and powerful Ninjor, the original creator of the Power Coins. Also, Rito brought gifts for Rita and Zed the Tangas who have replaced the putties as the foot soldiers for the season entirely. Luckily, the rangers get their powers back despite their suits looking exactly the same, now infused with the power of ninja. They also get brand new ninja zords. Tommy the falcon zord, Kim the crane zord, Billy the wolf zord, Aisha the bear zord, Adam the frog zord, and Rocky the ape zord. They're back in business. Then in the next episode, Kim's mom is moving to Paris to remarry a French painter, and it gives Kim some doubts about how, if this is going to happen, what would happen to the Power Rangers. You see, Kim really does not want to leave. But luckily, Aisha's family will allow Kim to live with them and finish out the school year before she moves to Paris to join her mom. Then we get an odd amount of Rocky-focused episodes and whatnot, and we notice that there's a distinct lack of Kim in a lot of these episodes. It's constantly stated that Kim is off training in gymnastics, and apparently she's getting ready for something big coming up. Also, we got our first Christmas episode ever, which involved the Rangers tossing snowballs at Rito and Goldar to defeat them, while little people were forced to be elves. Cool. In the multi-parter, A Ranger Catastrophe, we're introduced to a new character named Catherine who is also a white cat and also a cat monster. Her mission is to split up Kim and Tommy, and she's from Australia. Eventually, the whole thing is kind of resolved, but Kat has begun to infiltrate the team of Power Rangers, acting as a spy for Rita. Why Rita needs a spy is beyond me when she can literally see any and everything, but whatever, it makes a decent story if you just forget that part. Then, in Changing of the Zords Part 1-3, through three, Kat has completely become friends with the Rangers, and she even goes as far as stealing Kimberly's crane power coin, causing Kimberly to go completely weak because she no longer is fused to her energy. Also, the ancient Zords of Zordnia are discovered by the baddies, and their plan is to capture Kim, which they do, and force the rangers to pilot the new Zords to destroy their own planet. Zed even shows up in the command center to demand this of the rangers, and they're forced to do as he says. Oh, also the baddies have kidnapped Ninjor and the Falcon Zord, and even as the rangers take control back over the new Zords, now called the Shogun Zords, because apparently if they're the ancient Zords, it's weird, they still need to rescue the two from the moon. There's a one-off episode called Follow That Cab Next that involved Kimberly getting her car stolen, but it also says that a famous gymnastics coach is coming to Angel Grove, Gunther Schmidt. He's looking for people to train for the Pan Global Games. Obviously, this is a parallel to the Olympics in the Power Rangers universe. Then another three-parter comes and rocks our world with a different shade of pink, in which Kimberly meets Gunther Schmidt and he actually agrees to train her, and he stresses that she must be very dedicated to the training. She agrees, and this gives Zed and Rita the idea to tire out Kimberly, and she ends up getting so tired she falls off of a balance beam, hitting her head. In this moment, Catherine remembers who she really is. A good girl. A good girl. A good girl. Seriously, it's said like that. But she's too late. Then Kim is taken to the hospital, and the villains try to trade Ninjor for Catherine, but it doesn't work out for anyone in the end. Then Kim is offered to join Coach Smith in Florida to help him train her full-time for the Pan Global Games, and she's kind of convinced by her team that she needs to go, and she agrees, and she ends up giving her power coin to Catherine, making her the new Pink Ranger. Goodbye, Kimberly. After this, Catherine is the center of attention for a few episodes to make those kids like her again, before we get to the three-parter, Master Vile and the Metallic Armor. In this three-parter, we meet Rita and Rito's father, Master Vile. He shows up to really mess with the Rangers, but in a mess up, Rito frees Ninjor, letting him escape. He's then recaptured by Master Vile, being tied to a new monster, and the Rangers have to defeat the monster without killing their friend. Tommy and Catherine also go on the moon to retrieve something called the Zeo Crystal, which is below the moon palace, which is what Master Vile is after because with it, he can do anything. They get the Falcon Zord back in the process, and we also learn that apparently, the Zeo Crystal may be the reason why Zed looks the way that he does. Might have just been a joke though. The Rangers get the Zeo Crystal and they break it apart into five pieces, sending it into time and space so that not even they can find it again to stop Master Vile from ever getting his hands on it. The proper end of the season is Rangers in Reverse, where time is reversed once more, sending the Power Rangers back in time, turning them all into children. Enter 
the Alien Rangers miniseries. Without their powers or anything, the Rangers as children call for help from the Alien Rangers from Aquatar, who are fish-like beings who survive solely by getting hydrated. They have the Balaborgs as well as access to the Shogun Megazords, and they help to defend the Rangers while they try to find a way to make things right again. Luckily, Billy finds a way which includes using their power coins. He uses it on himself and he gets turned back into an adult, but then the device is destroyed along with the power coins, leaving them completely helpless. After some filler, Zordon says they need to just go back and find the shards of the Zeo Crystal that they sent away in order to use them for themselves to bring the Earth back to normal, and also to save the world. They each go back to their own heritage, kinda. So Rocky finds a crystal in the volcano in Mexico, Adam finds his in a waterfall in Korea, Tommy finds his on a cliff in Native America, whatever. Catherine finds hers in Australia, and Aisha finds hers in literal Africa because this show is really racist. However, while Aisha is there, she meets with a girl named Tanya, and she finds out the animals in Africa are struggling from an illness, and Aisha wants to stay and help. Also, the Alien Ranger's main baddie, Hydrohog, has come to the Earth, stealing the world's water supply. Lastly, Rito and Goldar are sent into the tunnels under the command center with a bomb to blow it up from underneath, and they live down there for like five episodes straight. Seriously. Then they're told to wait until the Zeo Crystal has been reformed, grab it, and leave as the place explodes. Aisha then realized that she really does want to stay in Africa, and just as the Alien Rangers defeat Hydrohog once and for all, Tanya returns to the command center with Aisha's Zeo Crystal. Billy puts all the crystals back together with the device he made, which returns everything to normal. But then, Rito and Goldar grab the crystal and bail before the command center explodes completely leveling the place as the rangers are all teleported out by Alpha at the last second. Also, Billy hugs a console for no reason while it explodes. This is where we leave season 3. This season is insanely awesome, especially for Power Rangers. I mean, if you watch season 1 and compare it to this, it's like the show has realized that it can be a real television show and tell stories. I mean, they set up Kim's departure pretty much from the start, and it took 25 episodes to even happen. I think there were also just some great little character moments in a lot of the filler episodes. Like when Kim and Skull bond about being friends in an episode called The Potion Notion. Because, yeah, they are friends now. It's nice to see. Also, seeing Rocky get a character trait was kind of awesome. He seems to now be the goofball of the team that's a bit comedic. And while I know some people really might not like that, I love it because I think Steve Cardenas really shines when you give him that type of character to play. It's also kind of sad that we lose two Power Rangers in this season, but honestly, Catherine is a fine replacement for Kimberly, while Tanya is one of my favorite characters to date in the franchise overall, so I think we're good. There was also just a lot of world building this season, even when there didn't need to be. We didn't need to know that Alpha was from Edenoi, but we do. We didn't have to meet Master Vile, but we did. However, with Master Vile came this terrible thing called the Metallic Armor, which was really lame. It originated just because they had metallic painted figures on the shelves left over from the movie the year prior, and they needed to sell them. Don't get me wrong, I actually don't mind the metallic armor at all. I mean, it's fine, but it's just a bit of a letdown with how little it's set up and its tiny bit of a buildup crumbles once you see it. Other than that, yeah, the Rangers have no powers, their alien friends have returned to their home planet, and the command center is gone, presumably with Alpha and Zordon as well. The bad guys have the Zeo Crystal, which a majority of the season was building up to. There are so many new characters in this season, it's kind of insane, and honestly the only thing that I can complain about is where the hell did Ninjor go after they got him back? I mean seriously, he's not around the Alien Rangers miniseries at all, which is insane to me because he's the one who created the Power Coins. So next time, before we dive into the next season of Power Rangers, we're going to be looking at something special that aired before the season. But until then, may the power protect you.